Welcome to Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Services weekly webinar series. This week we're going to be talking about what could possibly making holes in your lawn. You'll find that in the summertime there's often small holes about the size of a dime up to a quarter in various parts of your lawn and unfortunately there are many different things that could be causing these holes as you will soon find out and so it's really just a guessing game or a little bit of detective work to figure out what could potentially be doing it rarely are these holes anything that's anything to be worried about for your lawn they're just something that's living making a burrow under the ground but they're not going to be chewing on the roots of your turf or anything like that my name is Molly Keck and I am an Integrated Pest Management Program Specialist with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. So some of our potential suspects that could be causing holes in the lawn can be, the, li the list really goes on and on as far as who the potential suspects are who could be causing holes in the lawn or in other parts of your landscape. It could be bees and wasps. There are a number of digger bees and digger wasps that will do this. Some beetle species will do this. There's even crustaceans that will cause holes in the lawn. Some spiders will do it. And then at times it will always just happen to remain a mystery for you. So of the bees and wasps, this is just a, a few of those that might be causing holes. It could be a cicada killer, a tarantula hawk, bumblebees, and then a kind of umbrella term for any bee that will make holes in the lawn is called a digger bee. And yellow jackets will also do the same thing. We're not really going to be covering southern yellow jackets in this presentation, but that is potentially one thing that could be making a hole, although you see them coming in and out, so the mystery isn't always a mystery with the yellow jackets. Cicada killer wasps are super common in the summertime because their primary food source is the cicada. And cicadas of course are more abundant when it's in the dog days of summer. We are seeing a lot of cicadas the summer of 2020, many more than we have seen in previous years. So it's very likely that if it, you are watching this during the summer of 2020 and wondering what is making a hole in your lawn, you're dealing with the cicada killer wasp. The cicada killer wasp will find a cicada, sting it, and then carry it into its burrow where it will uh, lay its eggs and the larvae that hatch out of that will feed on the, the cicada. So it provisions the nest for its offspring. So here you can see the cicada is the size, if not larger than this little cicada killer wasp. And it's probably trying to get up high so that it has, it has a little bit more room to float down to wherever its nest is. Their nests kind of look like this. It's a, a dime to a quarter sized hole. You might see some of the soil that they have um, dislodged to make that burrow uh, be kicked out of the hole. Of course, that, that dirt has to go somewhere. So this isn't characteristic just of cicada killer wasps, but it is characteristic of anything that's digging some sort of a burrow. So it, this could be in your turf. Generally, it's you know along the side of uh, where the grass hits your sidewalk or maybe your porch patio because underneath and close to that concrete, it's a little bit cooler, and it's also probably a less compacted soil along those areas. Another potential suspect that's a wasp that will make a very similar hole is a tarantula hawk. These guys use tarantulas and spiders as their primary food source, so like the cicada killer, they are pretty host specific, um, pretty specific feeders, and really aren't that attracted to humans. Yes, they will sting you if you pick it up and grab it, but they're not going to come after you and attack you. Tarantula hawks, even less so than the cicada killer wasps, are even not very territorial. Cicada killer wasps can be pretty territorial and you can hear them buzzing around your head and they can be pretty frightening, but the ones that buzz around your head are usually the males and those guys can't sting you. So that's kind of the irony of the cicada killer wasp. So tarantula hawks might take tarantulas, but they also might take down just large spiders, and they do the same thing. They provision the nest for their young so that they can feed on these guys. So they're generally considered beneficial, if not beneficial, if you love your spiders, they're just a part of the natural part of the ecosystem. Bumblebees will also produce holes in the ground, but usually you'll see many of them coming in and out of that hole. Inside of the ground, you will notice um, just a, a hole and the bumblebees will kind of be protecting it oftentimes. And you will see them coming back and forth, bringing back nectar and pollen into the colony. If you dug away at that grass, this is what you would see. This is kind of a very um, general, uh, uh, this is kind of 
this is what a bumblebee nest looks like under the ground. And so you see different cells that hold honey. Those are like their little honey pots. They do produce honey, but just not enough for us to extract it from them to harvest it. And then there's different cells where their larvae, um, eggs are laid, larvae develop, they're capped up, and those are the pupa. And so they cooperatively care for the young. There is a queen in there laying all the eggs and there are workers that are out and about foraging for food. These will die off when it gets very cold, leaving behind a mated queen to overwinter. And then they start building up the colony again during the springtime and usually in the summer, kind of the end of the summer after the honeybees have stopped finding food. That's always when I see the bumblebees being a little bit more abundant and prevalent. They kind of like to go after those, those plants um, like your bougainvillea and your esperanzas that are blooming like crazy when we're in the hot, hot, dry parts of the year. Digger bee is just a generic term for any bee that digs into the ground and there's a number of different species of digger bees. They're generally native and they're generally solitary bees. And they like to get into spots of your turf or your garden where the soil's pretty soft and easy to move around. So it's not uncommon to find them in your garden beds. This is some digger bee nests. Sometimes it can be pretty unsightly if you have large colonies. So although they are solitary, they do like company and you will find multiple holes or burrows that where they've been laying their eggs. And one single female might have multiple burrows also, not just a single one. So the, the damage they do is just kind of a nuisance and unsightly, but they're not actually damaging the grass or the turf. So let's say that you have to manage the, the digging wasps and the digging bees. You absolutely can't stand to live with them. First, I would ask yourself, is it absolutely necessary? What are they harming that's bothering you so much? Is it just a nuisance that you see them flying around? Do you not like seeing holes in the ground? And, and then do you really consider that to be a reason to put out a pesticide into the environment and to kill something that is a fabulous pollinator or a very good part of the ecosystem helping to control different insects and pests that might be out there? So ask yourself if it's necessary and ask yourself if they're actually really doing harm. And if not, leave them alone because they are considered beneficial. If you cannot stand them for some reason, find the entrance or exit hole and use any pesticide that's in a dust formulation. So you could use a product that is diatomaceous earth um, or you could use anything that's in a dust formula and you sprinkle that in and around the hole and as they come in and out of it, if they're active, they will get that on their body and eventually succumb to that pesticide. There are a couple beetles that will be making holes in the ground that, during the summertime especially, but dung beetles will do it year round most of the time. So rhino beetles and dung beetles are the two that we'll talk about. Of course, there are many others that are options that are out there. Rhino beetles, rhino beetle is kind of a umbrella term, all encompassing term that covers different types of beetles in the Dynastini family. So these are ox beetles, or Hercules beetles, the Eastern Hercules beetle, very large beetles and their grubs are extremely large as well. And you might find these grubs in your compost. You might also find them in uh, your, even in your soil. And if you do, that's a fabulous thing to find. These are not the type of white grubs that will harm your turf. These are decomposing, um, recycling grubs that break down organic matter and turn it into treasure and great soil that's great for the ecosystem. So when you find these in your compost and when you find these in your soil, no matter what soil you find them in, this is an indication that you have great organic matter in that soil. So they're a good thing to find. If they're very large, they're a great find to see in your soil. The life cycle of the rhino beetle is that the adults will lay their eggs um, in the soil and the larvae will start to develop and then they'll pupate and out of that pupa case will come the adult finally. And when the adult emerges, it will start looking for a mate. Once it finds a mate, once if it's a male, it mates a few times probably and then it dies. It's, it's served its purpose. When it is a female, it lays its eggs and then it will die. So if you're finding them dead on your porch patio or crawling into your garage and dying, that's a natural part of the cycle. 
they are found more readily in the summertime but there are probably the life cycle probably only takes about six months or so in in the south texas area so you kind of have two different generations they live the majority of their life as larvae breaking down and feeding on organic matter in the soil if you think that they're feeding on dying or dead if you think they're feeding on roots of your plants understand that they only feed on decaying organic matter so ask yourself why is that plant decaying that would cause them to feed on the roots let's solve that problem instead of worrying about solving the problem with the beetles. These are two pictures of suspected rhino beetles or these are this is this is a picture of a suspected rhino beetle exit hole and I don't know if you can see it very clearly but there are kind of dime uh, nickel sized holes that you can put a pencil down um, pretty deep that these rhino beetles are emerging from because probably there was compost and great mulch that this garden bed utilized and that's just very attractive to them so it's not it's not harmful to that plant even though they're right up next to it they are really only concerned about those things that are decaying in the soil this is also another suspected rhino beetle exit when they are exiting um, coming out of the pupa and coming out of the soil, they've got to extract that soil and put it somewhere, right? So you're going to kind of have this waterfall of dirt that emerges from the hole. Dung beetles can also produce small holes in the ground. So dung beetles are probably only about around uh, the width of a, a dime. So that's the size of their hole. And what they will do, the species that we have in Texas, is they will find dung or fecal matter. The male and the female together will ball that dung into a, almost a perfect sphere. She will lay her egg in the middle of the dung and the, the baby that hatches out of it will eat the dung. So it's provisioned with food, utilize the harder outer shell of the dung as its pupa case, and then emerge as an adult. And that dung ball is rolled into a small hole where it's protected. So you can see here, um, into that little tiny hole it goes, and that's where you might see some holes in your in your turf where the dung beetle ha uh, is using that, utilizing it for its offspring. We have dung beetles pretty much all year round. Um, if you're in a warm part of Texas, so there's not particularly one time of the year that you notice them, but usually you will notice the holes when it's winter time and your grass is dormant and kind of thin, or we're in the hot times of the summer and your grass is just having a hard time struggling. And so it's kind of thinned out and you're able to see the soil pretty well. They don't, all, they, they don't always like to lay their eggs um, or roll their dung balls into turf. They'll find other spots to put it wherever it's easy for them to kind of excavate that hole. So for managing the digging beetles, Really, my best advice is just to ignore them. Understand that these guys are beneficial. If we got rid of all the dung beetles, we'd have a lot of fecal material that's all over the place. If you killed all of your rhino beetles, you're stopping that great process of breaking down the compost and your mulch and turning it into the soil that your plants require. Also, the rhino beetles are pretty much seasonal. We really only see um, the adults moving around notice them the most in the summertime so if you you can try to reduce the fecal matter in the yard for to reduce the dung beetles you can stop using mulch and you can stop using compost for the rhino beetles but the take-home message is just live with them they could cause holes in the turf but they are doing a great benefit to the ecosystem and amazingly, we can also have some crustaceans that will cause holes in the ground. And usually what they make is kind of like a tunneled out, uh, muddy kind of a spot. So it kind of looks like a weird like volcano or almost even a paper mache mess. Crawdads are crustaceans, so they require moisture. So they're gonna be found in lawns that are very, very wet. And so very bogged down lawns where you've had some intense um, uh, Flooding, it could be where a septic has um, overflowed or it's leaking. Usually they're not damaging the lawn, but the, the burrows that they make are pretty unsightly. And if they get large enough, they can damage lawn equipment. So you don't really want them around. And they're only gonna really be found in areas that are close to bogged down spots. So if you live right next to a creek or you live on a river or you have lakefront property, then crawdads may be something that you will come across. Um, usually if you're in West Texas, you're probably not going to see these guys, but if you live co closer to the coast and in an area that floods readily, the lawn is constantly bogged down, it is pretty common to find these. 
To manage these guys, you basically have to change the landscape and make it so that they don't want to come in there and make their little burrows. They're, you know, protected in there. So reduce the bog down areas in the lawn by changing the landscape in one in some way or another. That's really the only thing that you can do. There's not really anything you can spray or any bait that you could put out or any repellent that would keep them from coming around. The best repellent is to reduce the reason why they're coming in, which is to make a nest inside of that bog down area. And then there are also a number of spiders that will cause ho cause holes in the ground. They're burrowing out and digging a hole. They're either doing it themselves or they might be taking advantage of an abandoned hole from something. And usually these, um, it can be a number of different spiders, but the three main culprits are generally tarantulas, trapdoor spiders, or your wolf spiders. And the holes can be relatively large. If you look close enough, you will notice some webbing that they produce. So that might be an indication or a clue of what might be in there. Tarantulas, all, all spiders have spinnerets and so they can make webbing. So if you look, um, you'll notice that there's usually um, some sort of webbing that's almost like insulation or protective so that it keeps all of the dirt from falling in on them. So this is a tarantula hole, it's a burrow. Um, when it gets really rainy, tarantulas will move out of those burrows because they're drowning and start looking for a place to go. Um, but you know, you see a large hole in the ground, I wouldn't stick your hand in there probably because you might come across a spider. Trapdoor spiders um, are a kind of smoother version of a tarantula. They're not as hairy as a tarantula is, but they are, and they're smaller than a tarantula, but they're like the size of a small tarantula. Relatively large spider anyway. And they make a little trapdoor nest that um, when it gets really rainy or very, very misty, like kind of dense mist, it will stick to their little trap doors and it will cave in. And so the males will start moving around trying to get to a spot where it's a little bit drier. Um, but these are a really common spider that comes around usually around Thanksgiving in, in the San Antonio area. And you may or may not find their entrance holes. They tend to make um, more of a hidden trap door or, or a home versus other insects will do. Tarantulas also, they're more reclusive. They don't really like to be noticed or seen. So you, you don't see them as often as you would a cicada killer hole or dung beetle holes. And wolf spiders will do the same thing. And sometimes they don't have to be digging into dirt. They can kind of be digging through mulch anywhere that they can find some void and they have an entrance or an exit hole that they'll hide in. And they do make webbing, although they don't live in a web, they, they live under the ground or other under other objects. All of these spiders are harmless. Everything can bite. They all have mouth parts, but I always say, I will bite too if you put your finger in my mouth. So just don't try to poke at them or grab them. They're not gonna purposefully attack you and come after you. And then earthworms, um, this is a, not an insect and not a crustacean. Earthworms are annelids. They're their own thing related to other worms. But you can see their castings that they will form where they're digging through the soil. And those castings are very um, nutritious for the soil. They're really great to have for your plants, but you might not like the look of that on the ground. And there's really not a whole lot you can do to control the earthworms. They're there because you have great, great soil. So maybe try not having such good soil if possible. Possible. Break that stuff down a little bit, collect it if you can, rake over it, mow over it, do something like that to reduce it. Um, but it's really good to have in the ground. So if you kind of see um, uh, castings kind of look like muddy little clumps of, of dirt, that's how you know you've got earthworms versus something else. And it could even be making, there could be things making holes in the ground that could be something that's not even insect related. I caught this little armadillo in the middle of the day, little juvenile trying to dig a hole in my ground. Do I see holes in the ground? No. Is he smelling something? Probably. I got pretty darn close to him though before he ever noticed me. So they don't hear very well. They're not listening to things crawling in the ground. Um, they might uh, smell something in there, but really they're just, they're rooting around looking for food. So just because you have an armadillo doing this doesn't mean that you have grubs or anything like that in the soil. It just means that they're looking for some sort of a food source. They are foragers and they're ranging around. And of course, there's a number of other things that could be causing holes in the ground. The insects that I've showed you though 
are all making solid holes. You could stick a pencil in them. It's not shallow and it's not just kind of a mess like something rooted around in there. So insect holes are a little bit different from some of your mammal issues. Well, thanks for joining us for this week's weekly webinar. Maybe that gave you some insight into what be, what could be causing some holes in your lawn. But the truth is, most of the time it just remains a mystery. And most of the time it's not anything that we really need to be overly concerned about. There's enough stresses in this world and what makes a little hole in the grass is, should not be one of those. Be sure to check out other webinars that we have provided on this YouTube channel, My Extension 2 Tips.